Hmm. This hand looks amazing. So we play Sigarda's Aid into Ink Moth Nexus, Stoneforge Mystic, and then turn three we go for it with the uh, Hammer. Love this hand. Let's wish uh, for some luck. I think that I actually should have played Springleaf Drum here. I could have played Springleaf Drum, and then next turn, I could have played Stoneforge Mystic and tap the Stoneforge Mystic to play Sigarda's Aid. That would have been slightly better. What? City of Brass? Thoughtseize? Good thing we played that Sigarda's Aid! I think this is a, an interesting way to really show that um, whatever seems like the best play might not be. We don't know what the opponent is holding, so whatever might be like look like the most efficient mana-wise, they would have taken our Cigar to Zade there and we would have been in trouble. Oh, with the Memnite? What a draw. So we can go Memnite, Springleaf, Drum, Stoneforge, Mystic. Go get Hammer, and your turn, opponent. Uh, setting up a lethal play for next turn, so... Okay, so they have City of Brass up. Uh, what are they going to do with it? They're using it. That's a dangerous move. That's... What are you doing, opponent? Maybe they have Slaughter Pact in hand. They're going to go like Slaughter Pact into Angel's Grace. Or maybe they just don't know how dead they are. Oh yeah, the new Evoke cards. You're right. That's probably what's going on. Well, we're going to have the um, Recovery with a Pure Steel Paladin. I'm wondering if we should just play Pure Steel Paladin now. So let's see here, we tap, tap, Pure Steel Paladin, play Nexus. We're not gonna have enough mana to cast the hammer and attack with the Nexus. So I think we should just go for lethal this turn. Is Twitch crashing? Um, I hope not. I'm just taking a long time with my turn here. And the, uh, the bitrate looks good. But maybe Twitch itself is having a problem? Okay, so this one is newly controlled. Tap for mana. Okay, uh, let's attack. Like, I'm taking so much time here because I'm honestly trying to think of what the opponent could be doing where they tapped out there. It, it seems like it's pretty obvious what we were doing. The opponent knows we have Hammer in hand. They know we have Sigarda's Aid and Ink Moth Nexus. So the Serum Visions there was so suspect that I had to, like, wrap my mind around what could possibly be going on. 
But in the end, we decided to go for it, and we had lethal. All right, so we don't know exactly what the opponent is doing, but it kind of feels like Adnaz. It's some sort of combo setup. That's the only reason they would be running Scry Lounds. But without getting a, uh, a really good idea of what they're doing, it's difficult to know how to sideboard. So we saw Thoughtseize. We saw Serum Visions, and that was it. We also know that they're playing um, City of Brass, which gives them every color. Honestly, I'm really thinking it's Adnaz. And if it's Adnaz, then we want the, uh, the Seal of Cleansing and the Fragmentize. Um, I think I want to keep Giver of Ruins, do I? Don't really need Shadow Spear. Don't need Tormod's Crypt. Phyrexian Unlife combo? Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Those are the enchantments I was thinking about. So Seal of Cleansing and uh, Fragmentize for those. So we got three cards to take out and 40 seconds. Um, we're on the draw. So we can take out a land and I'm going to take out one Sentinel and one Giver. All right, so we just got to wait here for the opponent to uh, click. I think that um, what's happened here is that because I took so long to make the stupid obvious play last turn, the opponent's probably a little bit salty about that. I don't know, like this is just me making up stories. Um, I'm putting, you know, like my interpretations out into the world here, but um, because of the long sideboarding and the length of time right here, opponent might've just left the computer for a little bit after that game because I really, Took a long time to make that stupid obvious play. Uh, Tetranki says, let's wait for the opponent. Yeah, we're just, that's what we have to do. That's our situation. Uh, I've also tended to tantrums too. A tantrum is a very natural thing, but um, we have to kind of reflect, like, how does this actually appear? You know, it might feel nice at the time, but you look like a child. Game has ended. Um... North Logos lost due to inaction. So this is a salt mine. Everybody, everybody put the, chalt, the salt emotes in the chat. I want to see so much salt. Overdose on the ch salt emotes chat. Let's go. Um, so we have turn one giver of ruins. We don't really have a turn two play. But hammer is the easiest thing to find in the deck. And we have the Pure Steel Paladin. I'm actually leaning towards keeping this. I'm saying this is a mediocre keep. What time does new pack release? Not too sure. The spoilers for whatever new set were just starting or something. Weren't they? Hey there, Mana Traders. Um... What was the salt? We played against an unknown deck, and uh, they tapped out at a suspect position where we had uh, we were presenting lethal. So I spent a large amount of time considering my play, which should have been an obvious play because I didn't know what the opponent was doing, and uh, opponent kind of like just left after that, and we won due to uh, inaction. Exactly, handsome. Exactly that. 
the Garda's aid. So we have two ways to attach equipments, but we have no equipments. I'm interested in playing Ink Moth Nexus to Garda's aid this turn, so we have the Ink Moth Nexus ready to attack. And then we'll just uh, pass the turn. Um, I guess we can attack with Giver of Ruins. It can't protect itself, right? So I see no reason not to uh, attack with it. Okay, so they're holding up two mana. Mountain, Swamp, Plains, Forest, Island. Kind of looks like they're on, um, what's name? Oh, the Urza Sega here is super awkward with the Paladin. Oh, that's true, Donut. Alright, so we play Urza Saga. We attack with Ink Moth Nexus. And then pass the turn. Or, no, we, yeah. We play Urza Saga, we put Lurus to hand. And then pass the turn. Still attacking. Wow, they fetched shocked and did nothing? Maybe they were holding up the remand or something, and we just got to uh, nullify their turn by putting Luris to hand? Watery Grave untapped. Five Color Shadow. Territorial Cavu. There's a 5-5. Five, five. And they have uh, blue and black mana up. Okay, so they're going to tap out. Uh, let's hope we draw Hammer off the top, hey? Okay. Hammer. Coming up. Ah, not this time. All right, so I guess we just make a construct here. Um, kind of like playing the Pure Steel Paladin. Giving them a few things to, uh, to target. But if we play the Pure Steel Paladin, then we don't have enough mana to activate the Urza Saga. So I guess we just play Ink Moth Nexus. So that we can activate the Urza Saga, and we'll have a bunch of next size to, uh, to swing hammers next turn. Uh, we're not going to be using the, um, the stack for the hammer, so they're not going to be able to use a counter spell. We have a flyer, so this might be GG, depending on their hand. They have removal spell, they're going to be doing pretty well. I think we just take this damage. Just take it all, take six. I like this Verdant Catacombs. This looks really good. Old border with the colors on the uh, the text box. And because of the Giver of Ruins, they're going to need double removal spell. Oh, here's something. In the end step. They're going to fatal push the Giver of Ruins. Good call. Okay, that's one of their removal spells gone. Let's 
Sigarda's Aid. Well, we don't need another Sigarda's Aid. We already got one on the board. Um, I think I'm going to just make mana with the Urza Saga here. Go get Hammer. Oh, shoot. I was supposed to activate the Ink Moth Nexus in response. I did forget to activate the Ink Moth. What a punt. It's true, the construct is lethal as well. Okay, uh, let's attack. Don't think we attack with the construct here. It's not going to possibly like get us a win. So they do have a removal. Drown in the lock. Oh, that's not fair. And I guess this is a pass. A lot of stuff going on on all these turns. I mean, that was a turn five, so it should have been pretty impressive. Opponent still has four cards in hand. Should have put the um the hammer onto the paladin here, because yeah, now the lightning bolt kills the paladin. Do they actually have another way to interact with us here? Wow, another Drown in the Lock. Alright, so we need to draw Hammer off the top. Alright, Hammer off the top. Let's go. Oh, another cigar to say, get out of here. Play Lurus, play Giver of Ruins. Pass turn back. Let's see if we can survive one more turn. Then we can put Pure Steel back into play through the Lurus. Oh no, they got Polluted Delta. Gross. So Polluted Delta grows their Death Shadows by three, making them all 5-5, five five, so everything here is a 5-5. Five five. So we have to block with Alluris? That sucks. Hammer off the top. Is 
Thanks for the luck, doll. Last chance. Last chance for the hammer. Nope. Okay. Uh, do we have enough mana to draw a card and still do it? We have exactly enough mana. Yes. Wait till blocks. Hammer time. What? <laughs> Stole that one. Oh, this deck is nuts. All right. Um, Path to Exile looks really good here. Um, defense grid looks mediocre. I mean, like, maybe good enough. Kind of mediocre, is what I'm trying to say. Um, opponent's gonna have removal spell and counter magic, so defense grid looks fine. Is that true hero with the raid? Thank you so much for the raid, my friend. How did your stream go? What were you playing? So we're looking at bringing in four cards. The Tormod's Crypt. Um, not too into that. We'll take that out. Uh, Shadow Spear, definitely want to keep that. Giver of Ruins, want to keep those for sure. So we can take out some number of uh, Memnite, Esper Sentinel, and Springleaf Drum. Um, we're, we are on the draw. Let's take out a land instead of the drum. So guard is aid and hammer. This hand is gas. Keep this. So the question is, um, do we play the giver of runes turn one? Or do we play the Sigard is aid turn one? Hey there, crown. Welcome, welcome. And they're targeting us. So let's see. If we play the giver of runes turn one, then Sigard is aid could be thought seized. I really don't like that. I mean, they might just be thought seizing it here. Yeah, Inquisition. Okay, so we're, they're going to take the Cigar to Zade. Basically, whatever they don't take, we play. But we might get the thought seize bug. So maybe they're going to take the Cigar to Zade here and we'll just draw one off the top. Okay, they take the giver. So we get to keep the cigar to Zade. That's a big deal. Oh, when we get Memnite too? Memnite's not too great here because of the Stoneforge Mystic. Um, we're not going to be able to cast the hammer on the same turn. But I think it's still worth to play. Because maybe we just draw a hammer naturally off the top, right? It's happened before. I like to try and remember to keep my companion over here. Okay, there's the Kavu. Let's see if we draw a hammer off the top like a champ. Nope. Alright, so we're just going to play Stoneforge Mystic, get hammer pass. And I have no intention of blocking either. Okay, so here we should take a bunch of damage. I imagine they're going to use the Wooded Foothills here to increase the damage. This doesn't have Trample, does it? 
No, it does not. I'm fine with taking however much damage this is. Three or five. Totally fine. We have a ton of life at the moment. And one option we actually have here is to go Stone Forge, go get Spear, play Giver of Ruins, and then go in for it next turn. Where we would potentially have protection with the Giver of Ruins, so they would have to use their removal spells to clear our stuff out. Also, they don't have blue mana right now, so they cannot counterspell. Pure Steel Paladin, nice draw. Alright, so we don't have enough equipment for the Pure Steel yet. And, like, they probably have a Fatal Push or a Lightning Bolt. So yeah, I think I'm going to go for the slow play here, Stone Forge, Giver of Ruins, and uh, try and get them next turn. Which means one of these creatures is going to want to block probably this one here. Um, we can probably just attack with these two then. Sure hope that you're going to follow that up with something real quick, Donut. What about... Giver and hold up Colossus in case the bolt to save it. I like that play too. Yeah, nice. That's solid advice. And then we even have the Stoneforge Mystic to potentially put the Colossus Hammer into play. Oh, they still don't have blue mana. Okay, cool. Better versus discard? Yeah. Alright, I can dig this. Do we attack with anything? I think it's almost free to attack with Memnite here. Fatal push for the Giver of Ruins. Ruined. Uh, I kind of like block and then put hammer on Mystic. And then if they respond and kill our Mystic, then their Kabu is blocked, and next turn we get to Stoneforge get another hammer. And if we use one of their removal spells, that's great. Okay, go to blocks. And play a hammer. Yeah, Bolt is good, but if they bolt my Stoneforge Mystic here, that's a bolt out of their hand. No, this looks better. This is probably a uh, an Ancient Grudge. Yeah, that's a great way to answer what we're doing. Another cigar is aid. Oh, that is a problem. Ancient Grudge is super good against us. Yeah, the breeding pool to just Ancient Grudge, the Colossus Hammer.
Oh, they're going to discard a card instead of taking the Colossus Hammer out of our graveyard? How is Esper Sentinel performing? It's so-so. Uh, it's definitely drawn us quite a few cards. And I like it as a one-drop. I think it's probably, uh, I think it's probably decent. Armagoyf. So one thing that opponent is going to have to uh, start to worry about is their clock. They have to win two games. Okay, we got a planes, play pure steel. Hammer. Oh, what? They just counter it. Ah, oh, man. Brutal. Should have used a Stoneforge Mystic there. I wasn't thinking. They had blue mana up. Obviously, they have Stubborn Denial. Come on, man. So we need to block one creature, and then what? Yeah, and they still have the grudge. They're looking like really solid here. I don't think there's a card we could draw that would uh, get us out of this. We don't have engineered explosives in the deck. Oh, they have a lightning bolt, we're just dead. Alright, double block. That's a draw? And that's a planes, so I think that's it. I mean, we do still have another draw. Let's go hammer? No. All right, so that's GG. Although I think we should have passed the turn back and made the opponent use their clock to attack. Ah, uh, so let's see here. Defense Grid seems fine. Uh, Graph Digger's Cage, kind of like meh. It would stop them from recasting the, um, the Ancient Grudge. But like Tormod's Crypt is slightly better, because it takes the, the, uh, the Ancient Grudge away, and it takes away uh, Tarmogoy's power and toughness. Uh, we're going to want to bring the land back in because we're on the play. Yeah, I think we just want the paths. You think they're playing Asmo? We haven't really seen any other way for them to make food, have we? Oh, it's all good. All right. Uh, yeah, we definitely want to take the play. Show them Lurus. Okay, so we got Pure Steel Paladin, Hammer. 
We don't have a way to cast the hammer yet, but we have path. This hand looks fine. We'll keep it. I especially like uh, the Urza Saga just making um, Karnstrux turn after turn seems pretty good. Yeah, we don't have a way to cast Paladin yet. That is uh, a problem that we have with this deck from time to time, is finding the second white source for the Pure Seal Paladin. But Pure Seal Paladin is going to be more important when we have um, the Hammer. So we got a couple of turns to draw the white source. That's true, too. Okay, well, there's a hammer. I think uh, Urza's Saga Stoneforge Mystic here. Hammer a little bit early. Okay, and they're passing. So they have blue black up. They could have... Uh, I mean, that counterspell isn't any good here. Is this 5C Zoo with Cabu and Dragon? Um, It looks something like that, absolutely. I haven't seen a dragon, but we have seen the Cabu. It looks like uh, Domain Death Shadow. So I kind of like just having the Urza Saga available here to make a Karnstruct. And do that with our turn. Lightning bolt on the giver of ruins. Get out of here. I like that giver of ruins. All right, what do you have in store for us here? We're both still quite close on clock. Opponent has a couple more seconds than we do. And it looks like they're just going to pass the turn, so we're going to make a pair of constructs. Oh, they're going to Assassin's Trophy the Urza Saga. Sure. So that means we go get a Plains, right? That seems okay to me. All right, so we can't do anything with our one mana here except for path. Um, we could path the Stoneforge Mystic to get the extra mana. And then we could go Pure Steel Paladin. I think we would still need a land. I want to keep the path for their creatures. Sigarda's Aid, what a draw. Okay, so we can, I think we just go ahead and put the Colossus, we cast the hammer right now, 
Um, they're one blue mana. They could potentially like counter unless we pay one and we can pay the one. And then we can later use that mana to play the Giver of Ruins. I think this is actually lethal if they don't have anything. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Yes, we did it again. Um, not a huge fan of this hand, but it's okay. Um, we have the pure steel paladin turn two, and hammer is the easiest card in the deck to find. So this is a mediocre keep. And I guess like absolute worst case, we're putting Luris into our hand turn three. But yeah, this is not a good hand. <laughs> Don't tell anyone, but Coop has intel from the future. Yeah, there's a lot of weird time stuff going on. All wibbly wobbly timey wimey. I mean, just to get started, we have the Twitch lag. And then there's also time zones and the TARDIS that I got. So put all those things together and who knows if we're heading backwards or forward. And every once in a while, I like to go side to side. That's exactly how I keep my hand, says Blind. This hand sucks, I will keep. Yep. Same here. All right, so this time we are facing against the cookbook. And Asmo will be able to kill the Pure Seal Paladin basically next turn. But I really feel like we just got to play it out because our hand isn't doing anything else. So we are really at the mercy of the top of our deck here. Hopefully we will draw a hammer Aldrin familiar, yeah, we just don't want to see Asmo. No Asmo, please, one time, no Asmo. Watch, they just slam troll. Okay, there's a saga. Okay. Do they have... They do have the Asmo. Okay. Womp womp. They're going to be able to kill Pure Steel Paladin now. Shadow Spear? What? Permanents your opponents lose Hexproof and Indestructible. So that might actually be for the activated ability. And a Memnite. Gross. Alright, I'm just going to get Luris into hand here. Weird, my shortcut keys are having a little bit of trouble. Ah, they're working again. They just equip it to the big dum-dums and gain a lot of life and trample through. Makes sense. So the, uh, I mean, they are going to be able to get basically something out of both of uh, the sides of that card. So it seems pretty good. Um, Yeah, no blocks. Don't care. Three damage. You got it. And they just pass back. They're probably going to do the uh, Karnstruct, and then they also have access to the food here if they need it. 
Um, food can kill the Lurus, and we just draw another land, so I'm just going to go ahead and draw a, a new card. Not interested in playing the Lurus into Asmo here, and not bad, we get Stoneforge Mystic, so let's go get a Hammer. And we attack. No, we don't attack, because they have Urza Saga. No attacks. So yeah, they can just equip Shadow Spear to their constructs. Seems really good. I mean, it's almost exactly what we've been doing, right? Ooh, and they got the Witch's Oven, so they can start doing uh, cat stuff. This is just going to be uh, damage. We're going to take it all. Trail of Crumbs, so that gets them a bunch of uh, value. Double attacks here, right? I guess single attack is fine. No blocks. Yeah, and they can make more food, get more damage in. It's not going to be lethal this turn, but we don't really have anything good on the crackback, and they have enough food to use uh, Asmo twice. So if we try and put a hammer on something, that thing is dead. And we just draw another land. So we cast hammer, they kill pure steel in response. Yeah, this is, uh, this is a no-win situation. Okay, so we want Graft Digger's Cage, a Pithing Needle. Let's put this in Pile View for the uh, for this. So yeah, Graft Digger's Cage, Pithing Needle, um, Soul Guide Lantern. Basically, everything from the sideboard is good here. Fragmentize to kill their cookbooks. I guess Asmo is their kill spell. And they could just kill whatever we're about to put the hammer on. They had so much food. So as we put the hammer onto the stack, they kill the, uh, the Pure Steel Paladin. Hammer resolves, and we have nothing.
Right, we'll take the play, show him the cat. Got Urza Saga, Pure Steel Paladin, Pithing Needle. This hand looks great. Keep the hell out of this. Um, immediately, Pithing Needle, the Underwill Cookbook. So we play Planes, Pithing Needle, Ornithopter. Then second turn, we can play Pure Steel Paladin and have the Paradise Mantle ready to make mana. It means the Urza Saga is a little bit behind, but I think that's fine. All right, perfect draw here would be Hammer. Just the planes. All right, so pure steel into draw a card. It's the guard is aid. Yeah, we play those. Whip. And pass. It'll push, yep. Yeah. And a pass. Nice. Okay, let's play Saga and Crypt. And pass back. Um, actually, no, we put Luris to hand here. Yeah. Don't forget, we have Luris. Next turn, we could actually play Luris Pure Steel Paladin if we want, although I'll probably want to just activate the Saga. This is turn three. Opponent has already missed one land drop. Okay, so they do have the Saga here. And Trail of Crumbs. Okay. So we're going to get to do whatever we want on our turn. Let's see what it is. Hammer. Yes. Okay, so I guess we just play the hammer and then activate the Urza Saga. Seems good. Okay, smash. Take 10. And I want to activate the Urza Saga, so we'll just pass the turn from here. And they scoop them up. Nice. Pithing Needle on Underworld Cookbook. That's the way to go. All right. So we got another game to play against them. Um, We're on the draw, so we can take out a land if we want. We take out a land for the Springleaf Drum.
Hammer Time definitely underrated. I agree. Hammer Time has been criminally underrated for its entire lifespan in modern. Even when people started to think it was good and started to pick it up, they didn't realize how good it was. Maybe we should be bringing in paths. Because we path their Asmo. They can't kill our creatures. All right. Try with a couple of paths on the draw. Uh, we got a Sigarda's Aid, Stoneforge Mystic, Urza Saga. This hand is gas. Keep this. No turn one cookbook. Nice. Okay, we'll play Ornithopter Sigarda's Aid here. Next turn, we play Urza Saga Stoneforge Mystic. Ooh, the Foundation Breaker killing our Sigarda's Aid. Nice one. I mean, for the opponent, not for us, obviously. Path to Exile is not going to do too much here. Uh, yeah, let's just go ahead and make a Stoneforge. Go get Hammer. So their Saga is going to tick up before ours does. They're going to be able to go get their Cookbook. And we're probably going to end up getting Pithing Needle with this and maybe name Asmo. We'll see. No room for Batterbone. Um, we have Luris, so Batterbone is too much. Oh, I like the Inkmoth Nexus here. So I think we go Inkmoth Nexus Pass, and then we have Urza's Saga ready to go. We could also put Luris to hand. I'm going to pass here so that we can make a, uh, a construct. Oh, Batterbone does cost two. I was thinking about the other one. Well, um, honestly, I would still rather have Shadow Spear if I had to pick between the two. Shadow Spear, we can search up with Urza Saga. All right. Uh, thanks a lot for coming by, Cylon. Catch you next time. So I'm going to want to activate Urza Saga with their Urza tr Saga trigger on the stack just in case they go get Pithing Needle and name Urza Saga. Hey, no, that's, uh, it's always good to give thought to all these different cards that we could be playing. Okay, so there is a Pithing Needle. That is what they got. What do they name with it? Colossus Hammer. Okay, so we can't equip Colossus Hammer with a 
Paladin, but we can use Sigarda's aid. Take the damage. Oh, Sigarda's aid off the top? I love that we got to see the card. What a good draw. I think in that case, I just make mana with the, uh, the Urza Saga, right? Um, so we have four lands, play planes, one land for the Ink Moth Nexus, one land for the Hammer, one land for the Shadow Spear, or even better, one land for the Path to Exile, one for the Hammer. I'm going to go for it this turn. And what do we get with the Urza Saga itself? You think drum? I'm thinking needle. Because we already have enough mana, we don't need the drum. We have one mana here for the spear, and then two mana for the Colossus Hammer Shadow Spear. Needle on Goose. So they can't play Push. Ooh, I like that. Uh, Pithing Needle. Actually, we just path the Gilded Goose before we make the Ink Moth a creature, so they won't have push. We can make the Ink Moth ne uh, Nexus a creature during beginning of combat, so we don't need to do that. And it is a mana ability, so that wouldn't work. Um. So do we still name the Underworld Cookbook here, or do we just name Asmo? I'm going to name the Underworld Cookbook. Half the flyer. Activate the Nexus. Hold on a second, we don't have enough mana. I thought we had enough mana here. We still have to play the Sigarda's Aid and we just don't have enough. Damn it! No, I, I thought I counted the mana properly, I miscounted. That sucks. Oh, well, we still have the Ink Moth Nexus to play the hammer, so we can smash in with a, uh, a Karnstruct. Oh, that sucks. Well, hopefully we didn't punt that game into the stratosphere. But uh, definitely some subpar play there.
way off. We were off by one mana. And it was because I guess I didn't uh, take the path into proper consideration. They could have um, Fatal Push here, but the Karnstruct is still looking pretty solid. Pure Steel Paladin, nice. Okay, so we play Pure Steel Paladin, we activate Ink Moth Nexus. That is not going to be enough mana for the kill. So I think we just go for activate Nexus, hold up Hammer, see what they do. This is going to make the Karnstruct bigger. Attack, attack, attack. Play Hammer and put it onto Nexus. They do have the Fatal Push. We still hit them for seven and we get some lifelink. We don't have any more mana left, so we just have to pass. I mean, we have one, but whatever. What a game. Okay, um, I think I kind of like blocking this Karnstruct with the Thopter here, prevent a bit of damage. And they're just going to play a 4-2, makes sense. Shadow Spear onto the Daredevil, that's pretty good. So if we don't get an artifact, that's actually a killer for the Karnstruct. But we oh, we can't play the Lurus this turn. All right, let's draw a card. Ooh, Fragmentize. So we can Fragmentize the Shadow Spear. Or we could Fragmentize the Pithing Needle so we can put the Hammer onto our Critter. We're missing a little bit of mana to do that, unfortunately. That's just been like the entire game. We've just been missing one mana. We can't equip because of the Pithing Needle right now. So I'm wondering if we fragmentize the Pithing Needle and then Pure Steel next turn and go for it. Or, or we could fragmentize the Shadow Spear and keep on attacking this turn. Okay, so let, let me think about this for a second. We play Pure Steel. And they attack. We block here, and then we take basically lethal. I think we have to do the spear. And then we have Stoneforge Mystic as a blocker here. They're no longer gaining life. So that makes the, uh, the combat far more difficult for them. When we were both gaining life on both sides, we were just able to swing freely. But now they have to think a little bit about their combat. And they decide to come in all the way. We'll block one. And they have an Urza Saga. Okay, well, if we let them stick around for a couple more turns, that's going to seem pretty good. What do we get? Planes. No good. All right, so let's see here. We attack. They have 12, and we're gaining 5. We're going to have to play the Pure Steel Paladin as a blocker here. Because they're going to be able to make a uh, Karnstruct, which is going to make their attack lethal.
but we can put the Shadow Spear onto the Pure Steel Paladin. So when it blocks, we'll gain a bit of life. What a game! Urza Saga looking to uh, go to level 3 here next turn, which is terrifying. Now, yeah, if they attack, we have to block because they have the Urza Saga. So we're priced into blocking here. We might as well... If we block this thing, it goes back to their hand. So I think we block the Karnstruct. Build our board. Um, yeah, we don't have anywhere to go from here anyway. Sigarda's aid is not what we need. Yeah, didn't find the hammer we needed. We got Sigarda's aid instead. So that's GG. We attack with Shadow Spear, they block or don't, doesn't matter, and then they kill us on the crackback. Good games. Could we maybe hold this Construct back a turn? Well, they're going to Urza Saga. The path turn, yeah, absolutely it did. The path turn punted it. Needed the Spring Leaf, needed that one extra mana the entire rest of the game. And I mean, Pithing Needle wasn't doing anything here. So yeah, I thought I had counted my mana correctly, but I made a mistake. And we did not have enough mana in a Crux turn. And we could have had the mana we needed, we just didn't. Oh yeah, the drum mattered big time. Pretty sure this is just lethal. Yep, minus six. Well lethal. All right, good game, opponent. Alabaster Wolfie, GG. This hand looks great. So from the Temple Garden, I would say they're probably still on Enchantress, but uh, we'll wait and see. Maybe they're using a bit of time off their clock to come up with a response. <laughs> Where is she? <laughs> uh, five out of seven. Esper Sentinel. Hmm. I think I still blaze Cigar to Zade this turn. What do we get? Not a hammer. So I'm thinking Stoneforge Mystic, get hammer, pass turn. You were thinking play Sentinel? 
I mean, we would have gotten nothing off of this and potentially one card this turn. Whereas this way we get um, Hammer ready to go. And this is going to be a big smash. If we draw Hammer, it's lethal. We get Ink Moth Nexus. Ink Moth Nexus is interesting. So I'm going to play Nexus, um, play Hammer, smash them, and then play Esper Sentinel. And play Aid and Hammer in the same turn. Yep, that's true. And we would have an we would have an extra card that way. I really hope they block here. No blocks. Of course they're not going to block. They know we have hammer. Uh, put the hammer on this one. Smash. All right, your turn. Uh, yep. That's fine. That's fine too. They're gonna have to lose a creature here. Um, actually, we might just have lethal. I think we have lethal here. Because they don't have flying. Just win with Infect, I think that's right. Your Steel. Ooh, no, because they, they can block the, uh, the Ink Moth Nexus. Because it's not going to have flying in combat. Yeah, we, we're missing one mana again. Always missing that one mana. So let's see here. In that case, since we are missing one... We can attack with the Ink Moth Nexus. The Mem Knight is lethal as well. Yeah, we don't have mana for the second activation. That's the problem. So I'm wondering if we even bother attacking with Ink Moth then. Because Mem Knight is just as lethal. And they can block it just as easily. Okay, so there's one damage on the Memnite. If we move the hammer, the Memnite dies. So I guess we'll just pass. That's true too. Moving the hammer to Sentinel would have been pretty good there. They would have to pay 11 to uh, keep us from drawing a card. Solitary Confinement costs 3 mana. And they're going to be able to do that for a long, long time. Prevent all damage that would be dealt to you. And this is damage is dealt in the form of poison. So solitary confinement does stop poison. Is that correct?
Unfortunate. So we might just be too late at this point. <laughs> Where are all those hammers previously? We needed these hammers a turn ago. So they have so many cards in hand, they have a bunch of Enchantress, they should be able to keep this confinement going for the rest of the game. I really don't see us getting through this. We should probably just concede here. I mean, this is a finisher. All right, we'll F6 for a little bit. They have to finish us before they deck out. It'll just take uh, a minute or two to see a few more cards. And they should be able to kill us pretty easily. Yeah, yeah, it has Trample and Haste. Although we can make a pretty big blocker. So let's see if we can maybe make like a really, really big blocker. We're going to have to make multiple blockers, huh? Oh, yeah, I think this Destiny Spinner is just going to be able to crush us. Because they're going to be able to make like multiple 10 tens. Okay, the Colossus Hammer has a uh, flash, so let's just draw a card. Cast the Memnite and pass back. I mean, bigger than 10 tens now, but this turn they're going to make a few more enchantments and their their creatures are going to be bigger than a 10 10. Ooh, on thin ice. And that's going to get rid of the I guess we have to wait and see. We'll draw a card for that, Tormod's Crypt. Targets one of my big creatures makes sense. Nothing I can do about that. Don't have protection on the board. Another on thin ice. Comes a 12 12. We can make a 12 12. Please stop. Oh my god. This has got to be lethal, right? Like, there's no way we can get through this. We only have the one hammer, and these all have trample. So that's GG. Good game. Uh, let's bring in our enchantment hate. We got Fragmentize and we got Seal of Cleansing. Uh, do we want to bring in Graft Digger's Cage? I don't think so. Um, we could bring in Pithing Needle. I want to get rid of Tormod's Crypt. 
I'm not a big fan of Giver of Ruins here. That's what was my thinking, Donut. Gonna have to remember what that card was called. Destiny Spinner. Got two more cards to take out. I like the trample. We're going to keep that. Usually have an Emrakul. Okay. Not too much we can do against an Emrakul. Uh, basically nothing. Just win before, I guess. All right, we're going to take out a couple Memnite, I guess. Taking out a lot of creatures here, but we have a lot of creatures in this deck, so shouldn't uh, hurt us too bad. Not a huge fan of this hand. Then again, Urza Saga immediately into Stoneforge Mystic. We're going to keep it. Basically just on the strength of these Urza Sagas. Uh, first one is not really going to make us a Karnstruct, but it's going to be able to go get us like a Pithing Needle or something. And we can tap it to make the Stoneforge Mystic. Or we can wait a turn. Let's wait one turn and that, one, that way we can make Karnstructs. Yeah, the Angel Enchantment. I know the one you're talking about. Makes a bunch of 4-4s, four I think, every time you cast an enchantment. Go get Hammer. Chantress's presence. And we get a Memnite. So I'm thinking play Memnite, play Planes, Activator as a Saga. And then we just attack for one. And we'll get two Karnstructs. So this is a very slow hand. Ooh. That's terrifying. And Stony Silence. Activated abilities of artifacts can't be activated. Yep, that's a good one. Fortunately, this is an enchantment. We're going to make another construct here. Go get Pithing Needle. Or should we go get Springleaf Drum here? So we have land. And then with um, Drum, we could play Spear and Hammer. No, that's not good. It's not going to be good to have these enchantments on the battlefield, basically. So I think probably the best thing we can get is Pithing Needle. Yeah, Stony Silence stops the Spring Leaf Drum. It stops almost everything. So we have to get the Pithing Needle. And then the question is, what do we name with the Pithing Needle? Uh, Pithing Needle doesn't stop mana abilities. So we probably just want to go for... Um, Either the enchantment that uh, allows them to search, 
or the card that they won with last turn, Destiny Spinner. I think I'm going to go for the Destiny Spinner and hope that the, that's basically like the card that they win with. You think Depp named Sterling Grove? Kind of on the fence between the two. I think Sterling Grove is pretty good because that's the one that's going to let them get whatever they need. Okay, um, and then after that we can play Urza's Saga here, I think. And then we'll just attack. We could play one of these things, one of these equipments, to boost our power. So we're swinging for four, five, six. This would be for seven. Uh, for six, puts them to 12, and then, then four is eight, nine, ten. So yeah, putting an equipment down here is actually pretty strong. Oh, well, thanks for the uh, the tip, Seafing. There's the Destiny Spinner, though. And another one. Get out of here. Well, they're going to have to make some blocks. What do we draw? Give us Cigar to Zade. Another Saga. Okay. We'll just keep making constructs. So they can take seven and kill one of our other creatures. That's fine. Sure. So this is the big turn. Worship. Wow. So we're going to need Infect, I guess. Yeah, we need Infect now. Our paths are in the board, unfortunately. We cannot kill this because of Oromancy. What can we get with Pithing Needle, or sorry, with Urza Saga here? That Worship. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, we do not have Expedition Map. Pass. 
I mean, no point in attacking here. And we are way low on clock. So this might be another loss. Regardless, we have been having a good time with this deck. I am loving Hammer Time with Urza Saga. Oh, wow. Batman scoops him up. Why did you scoop there, Batman? It kind of felt like I couldn't win. Maybe they couldn't win. Because we named Destiny Spinner, they just didn't have anything to beat it. That's my guess. I mean, that, that's the only thing that makes sense to me about why they would concede there. They must not have another win con. They might sideboard into another win con for this matchup, but they didn't there. All right. Um, did we take a land out? We haven't. So we could take a land out here um, because we're going to be on the draw. It's a habit I have been getting into. Eventually, you would have been able to get Seal and Luris going. Yep. If they didn't find another thing that gave all their cards Shroud. Hidden Grove and Spinner is a good one-two punch. Absolutely. Just wondering if I want to take the planes out for the Memnite. Yeah, exactly, Team Red. Once they had, once all of their auras had Shroud, then we wouldn't be able to use the seal. Okay, this hand looks great. We'll keep. Looks like a turn three, I think. Okay, we get planes, so I'm going to want to play, um, let's see here, Ink Moth Nexus, Springleaf Drum, or Plain Sigarda's Aid. I don't think there's any way for me to kill them turn two here, so I'm just going to play Plain Sigarda's Aid. And we'll try and set up a turn three kill. Destiny Spinner, you got it. Pithing Needle, nice. Okay, so we'll play Springleaf Drum and Pithing Needle here. Uh, so what was the first name again? Sterling Grove? Obviously, I'm spelling it wrong. Just check up here, scroll up and chat a little bit. It was up here a moment ago. Ah, thank you. Spelling. No, you're supposed to play stuff there. Okay, so this one is newly controlled. Tap it for mana. Activate. Go to combat. Looks like they're F6'd. Hmm. 
Three one. What do we got? Um, so we have actually a pretty good hand here. I'm keeping this. We have turn one Esper Sentinel Mem Knight Springleaf Drum. Turn two Pure Steel Paladin. And I think we can even start with Ink Moth Nexus. We're up against Dr. Queller? What? I think this is the first time we've played against Queller. I'm pretty hyped to be playing up against Dr. Queller. That's awesome. Um, Dr. Queller is one of the best Spirits players in Magic. <laughs> Batman definitely doesn't do the business. He's too busy. Uh, you watch or read Batman comics or older shows, you know he definitely does. With Batgirl, Ivy, Catwoman, others. Yup, yup. Batman's a bit of a hound. Time to hit some spirits with a hammer. Too bad he always loses to Ghostbusters. <laughs> Who are you going to call? Yeah, turn one Aether Vial looks good. Okay, so we wanted to play Ink Moth Nexus, Springleaf Drum, Mem Knight, Esper Sentinel. Okay, pass. Shacklegeist, good card against us. And they have the Aether Vial, so they actually are able to tap one of our creatures if they need to. But they're not able to counter whatever we're doing right now, so it seems like a great time to throw this pure steel paladin onto the board. Too bad we don't have any equipment to back it up. Okay, and we'll pass. Mausoleum Wanderer, not going to have too many hits against our deck. Sure, tap the Esper Sentinel, pretty good play. Solid play for Mr. Queller. And I just realized I assumed your gender, Doctor. I'll do better. Well, that's a pretty solid start from our opponent, and they potentially have another tap here ready to go. So they're really putting the pressure on. Oh my, that's a lot of damage. Take nine. And they got two blockers, so they're doing pretty good here. And we just draw land off the top. Rough. Cancel that. We need the Ink Moth Nexus as a blocker. We can block the Shacklegeist. I think this is GG, but we're going to give it one more turn. So 
So they can tap one of our creatures here. This goes up to three. Aether Violet three is a terrifying position. And they have two cards left in hand. What's uh, Dr. Queller's record here? 3 0. So they're going on a trophy run here. Uh, yeah, we're going to want to try to block. And yeah, they Aether Vial, tap the Nexus. Oh, another Supreme Phantom. Nice. GG. Quick one from Queller. Okay, let's see what we can do on the play. Uh, let me think here. We don't have too many good cards against our opponent. Um, Path to Exile is pretty much it. We could like bring in Fragmentize against their Aether Vial. Um, actually, we might want to bring in Seal of Cleansing because they could have um, Chalice on one. So we're going to take out uh, Tormod's Crypt. Want Shadow Spear for sure. Um, Esper Sentinel's actually pretty bad here. They're not going to have any ways to trigger the Sentinel. So we're just going to stick with this. Uh, we're going to bring Paths and Seal of Cleansing. Cleansing in case they have um, Chalice. And if they don't have Chalice, it still hits Aether Vial. Just going to think for a second here. We could bring in Pithing Needle for Aether Vial, actually. I don't mind just bringing in one, because we can get it with the Urza Saga. That means we'll have to take out one more card. Okay, let's go. Uh, actually, I probably wanted to take out the Giver of Ruins rather than the, the mana. Let's bring the Springleaf Drum back in. Giver of Ruins isn't too good in this matchup. It can give a creature unblockable or it can protect it from um, a Skyclave. Don't know about you, friends, but I'm starting to get mighty hungry. This is going to be the last match of the stream. I uh, hope you've all been enjoying it. Let's take the play. We have Sigarda's Aid. We're missing a hammer, but this hand looks wicked. Keep, keep, keep. So, go Sunbake Canyon, Mem Knight. Second turn, Cradial Plating on Mem Knight. With the Urza Saga. And then we can start making dudes. And depending on what spirit they play here, we might actually just want to throw Shadow Spear onto the Mem Knight. Okay. Um, so yeah, we'll attack, and then we'll see if they block or not. If they don't block, we'll put Cranial Plating on it. If they do block, we'll put Shadow Spear on it. I think they have to block if they have the option to, because we could just have Hammer here. It does exist in their list. They have, um, it's a pirate. They play three of them. Spectral Sailor. Yeah, they have three Spectral Sailors in their list, so they could throw that down right here. They don't, so we'll play Cranial Plating. And get the extra point of damage. It's good for one extra point. Ha ha ha! 
That's exactly the thing. All right, as much as I like making a Karnstruct here, uh, throwing a Shadow Spear onto the Memnite is also really good, depending on what they play. So yeah, if they play a Spirit here and keep them both back... Oh, there's the Chalice on one. So Shadow Spears, uh, that, that would have been one reason to play the Shadow Spear last, time, last turn, and we did expect them to be playing Chalice. Another land. Brutal. Um, I'm into attacking here. We're going to make a Karnstruct. We can trade. They do block. Okay, no reason to make the, uh, the creature yet. We'll just trade and pass back. Yeah, I think I should have done the Shadow Spear last turn. Um, it would have played around Chalice. It would have gained us life. It was just really the better play. I played Cranial Plating because it was the mana we had. We had two mana. So I figured Cranial Plating, we have two mana. We're using our mana most efficiently that way. But ma mana efficiency isn't always the best play. Aww. Cavern of Souls can't be countered. Dr. Queller, too strong. And the Shackle Geist to tap our Karnstruct. I think I'm going to make another Karnstruct here. It only costs one mana to equip Cranial Plating. Oh, what do we get? So this comes directly into play. Too bad we can't get the Shadow Spear, damn it. Um, could get Hammer. Throw Hammer onto Karnstruct. That seems pretty good. Yeah, let's just go get Hammer. Actually, I like Paradise Mantle, or sorry, Pithing Needle naming Shacklegeist. That's pretty good. Oh, this is, uh, oh, Skyclave Apparition. Damn it. What a great counter to what we're doing. What do you uh, get with Skyclave? You take the Pithing Needle. Makes sense. Okay, so they can attack for two here, and then they get to tap one of our critters. And because we don't have double black, we're not able to switch the Cranial Plating around. Springleaf Drum, another one drop. Go to combat. So they tap that. We get to attack for three. And we will put the Luris to hand. If we can get the Luris down, we have a lifelinking creature. We can play the Mem Knight, which increases the power and toughness of our constructs. Oh no, another Skyclave Apparition. And they're targeting the Cranial Plating. Good hit. Are they just going to start smashing for everything here? They probably should leave the Skyclave Apparitions back so they can tap a thing down. Attack for four, I think. Yeah. Makes sense.
and the hammer, which we cannot play because of the chalice. Make a bunch of three threes. We might actually supposed to just like pass here so that we have blockers for their apparitions. Because if we attack... No, that doesn't really matter, huh? Because we're going to have the Luris to potentially block anyway. Uh, we cannot return lands with Luris. It says a permanent spell. And this is a land. Yeah, it would be crazy if Luris could bring back Urza's Saga. Kataki of War's Wage, and that's a spirit. We gotta pay mana every turn to keep our Karnstructs alive. And they just have Supreme Phantom. So this is basically GG. We go to one here. We can't use our Sunbay Canyons. We're gonna lose our artifacts. GG's. Okay, so out of our two leagues, um, we ended up going seven and three with hammer time. Uh, let's actually bring up the league here. Dr. Queller, good opponent here. And we can obviously see how they've been doing so well with the spirits list. It looked amazing when they were piloting it. All right, so we're going to do a, a short rundown here with the list, and then I'm going to set up a raid. So if you want to stick around for a few more minutes, um, there will be more magic incoming. I, can, I do understand, though, if you uh, egress and decide to find more entertainment or whatever the day brings. So first off, one of the things that um, has been discussed previously, but I want to go ahead and make it very clear right now... Um, if you're playing Cranial Plating in the list, you should be playing Silent Clearing. They go together because Silent Clearing makes black mana. Cranial Plating is attached with black mana. Um, long story short, the reason why I don't have those right now is I don't own Silent Clearings. I do own Sunbay Canyons. And when I was building the list, Cranial Plating was not a part of it. I decided to slot it in because of how good it is in this deck. We aren't able to search it up with Urza Saga, but we can search it up with Stoneforge Mystic, and it gives us um, a card we can use to win that isn't a one-drop and isn't Colossus Hammer. So if they uh, take Colossus Hammer out of our um, deck, or if we're not able to use it for some reason, Cranial Plating still exists, so we can still win with that. Um, the Urza Sagas have been absolutely incredible in this list. Um, a lot of people have been talking about this card potentially getting banned, and I can see why. Uh, it just does everything. It's a land, so it cannot be countered. It creates creatures that, again, cannot be countered. Searches your library for an artifact that, again, can't be countered. Urza Saga is... Uh, I mean, it's everything that it's hyped up to be, honestly. So, would I recommend this deck? Most heartily. If you enjoy a, uh, a deck where all your decisions are front-loaded, 
then I would 100% recommend this if you enjoy complicated puzzle decks where you have to consider um, one and two turns ahead. I would absolutely recommend this deck. And if you enjoy smashing face with giant creatures, I would absolutely recommend this deck. 